Hello everyone, welcome back to Carlos Cooks. Today we're going to be making Cornish pasties, um, staple of the tin miners of yesteryear in Cornwall. Um, a meal in one really, pastry case filled with some lovely stuff, some beef skirt, some sweet onions, carrots and potato baked in the oven. Um, everyone loves Cornish pasties so you've got to have a go at making these. Um, I have had trouble getting a few ingredients that I needed, um, so we've had to tailor it slightly. Um, you'll be well aware of what's going on at the moment, and uh, the shops are pretty empty, and um, even the, the weird things like beef suet and vegetable suet, just can't get them. So I'm using a few replacements to help us make the pastry we need for these Cornish pasties today. So uh, that's what we're going to do from start. We're going to make the pastry, we're going to put that in the fridge, we're going to let that rest for about 30 minutes, which is uh, sort of ideal time for the... Uh, fats that we've put into the pastry to firm up the pastry ready for rolling and uh, using in our Cornish pasties um, but whilst that's doing that and resting in the fridge we're going to make the um, filling for our pasties as well so let's start um, what I've got here is 500 grams of strong bread flour you notice we're going to do this by hand we're not going to use a mixer and in here I've got sort of a replacement for our what we would be, where we'd be using either beef or vegetable suet um, I've got uh, 60 grams of beef dripping and I've mixed that with another 60 grams of a, a sort of butter replacement that you can find in the supermarkets. It's um, a fat but it's um, vegetable based. It's a replacement for butter. Um, you use sort of 20% less of it if you were using it in a butter recipe. It's supposed to be healthier for you. So I've mixed that with the, the beef dripping I've got. So we've got 120 grams there of normally what we would have as either beef suet or shortening. Um, and then 25 grams of butter to go in that and just a teaspoon of salt. So we're going to put all those ingredients into the pan here, mix them in and then I'm going to work them on the top here with some flour and we'll, we'll mould the pastry to where we need it to be before we put it in the fridge. So if I just grab a knife, on the top here I've got the shortening which is very, very soft you can see it's sort of room temperature butter consistency now so I'm going to put that in first but obviously the the dripping is a harder consistency so what we want to do with that normally we would have maybe put the block in the freezer and then held it and grated it in but I'm just going to use the side of a knife just to slice it up thinly into our flour it is quite soft now, it has been at room temperature for a while, so we're just breaking it up. You could use, still use the grater if you wanted to. There's no need to, this is going to melt as we work this dough. Now for many years there's been a, a little controversy on to whether you can call a pasty a Cornish pasty if you're not physically making it in Cornwall. I don't worry about that. It's the recipe that's important, it's how you're making it, and this is a traditional Cornish pasty mix. We're not putting anything in it alien, we're not making a derivative of it. So I don't think we have to worry. I believe the Cornish pasty is where it all started. You know, wherever you go in the world you see different versions of it, you know, Jamaican patties. And of course nowadays they they sort of branch out and you can get pork and apple flavours, you can get uh, Stilton steak and ale. There are so many different versions nowadays, but this is the this is the classic. This is the one with the swede and the potatoes and the onions and the carrots in. Okay, so just get that out. That's our 120 grams of our mixture that's uh, basically given us the fat content and then of course the butter which has been sitting at room temperature and you can see that's nice and soft now that will mix in easily and all we're going to add to that is a teaspoon of salt doesn't need much in it we're going to put um, Basically, once we egg wash our passes at the end, we're going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, ground sea salt and ground black pepper over the pasties before we bake them. It just gives that nice flavour to the crust. Two 
teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just going to use a, a spoon to start that off. And just get those mixture of those ingredients in. But there is one more ingredient we've got to put in that I've got chilling in the fridge, and that's sixty fluid ounces of uh, cold water. So as soon as I've got this starting to break in, I'm going to add the water in, and this will start coming together. And then we'll get our fingers in to finish it off. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using the side of this wooden spoon just to go through and start to break that fat up into the flour. Okay, so time to add the water. We can add all of that in in one go. We don't have to mix it in bit by bit. Now it'll start to get a little sticky. And you'll see it's starting to come together. So what I'm going to do now is switch to the hands so you can really get that mixed in. And ideally you've got to do this in the bowl for about five or six minutes. Just bringing all those ingredients together. It's, it may look like it's very dry at this stage but there's a lot of fat in there. And you've just got to give it a chance to soak up the, the flour. And then once we've got it all blended together in the bowl here, we'll be able to take it out onto the surface and work it a bit further. It is a messy job again, so make sure you've got a bowl of warm soapy water on the side to wash your hands. If you find it's a little dry and it doesn't seem to be coming together, Add a few more drops of water just to help it. You've got to be quite firm with it to mix it in. Really got to scrunch it through your fingers. If you don't fancy the additional exercise, just get your Maggi mix out, food processor. You can make pastry dough in there very quickly, or if you've got a dough mixer, do it in that. But you want to just mix it until the ingredients have all come together and then take it out and work it a bit by hand. Basically what you're looking for with the pastry, once we take it out and we start kneading it on the surface, you're looking for a, a smooth consistency to the uh, the dough you're looking for it to be smooth and not have you know you can't see the the lines of the mixture in it right that looks pretty good and what you'll need to do is put a little bit of extra flour on your work surface Some people put oil as well, just so it doesn't stick. Put that there in case we need it, but for now, we're doing all right. So now we're just going to, very similar to when we're making bread, you're pushing it away from you with your hands. Just breaking down the fats and mixing them in them in with the flour, like that. And this is going to take, once again, a good five, six, maybe more minutes of hard kneading to get it to where you want it to be. It 
you quite a workout. You're probably here, I'm already puffing. The dough is quite firm, it's not like a bread dough at all. Now what I'm doing is folding it over and then knuckling it down, turning it 90 degrees and doing the same again. You can see all the time starting to look better, starting to look more like a pastry. Now as this has to sit in the fridge for 30 minutes once we've finished moulding it. I'll make up the uh, ingredients to go in the middle of the pasties, which isn't going to take too long, but we'll then take a break while we wait for the dough to come to the right point. Now obviously if you wanted to do a vegetarian or vegan version of this, your vegetable suet is the option to go for, or that fat alternative to butter that I was using. You could use that in its entirety with some vegetable shortening. And that would make sure your casing is uh, vegan or vegetarian friendly. And then for the inside just a bit the uh, the beef skirt that we're going to put in. Just stick with the vegetables. Um, add a bit of cheese in, vegetarian cheese or vegan cheese if you want. And that will give you a suitable variant of this. get that now to the point where it's uh, all mixed in. I'm not using a plain flour for this. You could do if you wanted to, but I use strong bread flour. It's got much nicer taste to it. So the pastry will be a lot better. roll it into a ball flatten it down a little bit we're going to put that in some cling film now We want to put that onto the cold surface of one of the shells in the fridge because we really want it to take up the chill. See, so that goes in the fridge. We can now get out our other ingredients.
Okay. Right. Uh, the ingredients for the filling, very easy. I've got two medium-sized potatoes that I've peeled, sitting in water here. Um, one large carrot, chopped in half. One whole sort of large to medium-ish onion and the end of a swede. Roughly about 100 grams you need. Whew, let me catch my breath back. And then 300 grams of beef skirt that we've got here. Um, beef skirt's ideal, but you can use stewing steak if you want. Um, or thinly sliced steak if you can't get anything else. I was fortunate to get beef skirt. Um, one of my local supermarkets has a fantastic butchery inside, so they had a lot of beef skirt. It is a little bit on the expensive side as a meat, um, but uh, it goes a long way, especially in Cornish pasties. So this is going to make us four extremely large pasties. Um, so first of all, we're going to chop these vegetables. And what we want is to chop them slightly differently because the swede is a very hard uh, vegetable. It takes a little bit longer to cook than onions. It takes a little bit longer to cook than carrots and potatoes. So we're going to cube our potatoes and carrots around about the same sort of size and they'll cook um, pretty well. They're going to be almost a bit, bit smaller than a centimetre squared, the potato and the carrots. The swede we're going to slice a lot thinner. It has to cook in the same time but the swede takes a lot longer to cook so we need thinner slices of that. The onion we can cube in the same manner. So we'll just start with that. Let's get these potatoes out. And what I'm going to do is just slice them through in sort of centimetre thickness. Like that. And then as if you're making chips, a centimetre wide. And then you can just cube them like that. That's as easy as it is. When you get a bit more confident, you can double up the slices to do it. So, about a centimetre wide, and then just cube them down. Now, there's not a lot that goes inside a Cornish pasty apart from the meat and the vegetables. Bit of seasoning and that is it. Um, a lot of people think, oh, there's something in here. Is there a gravy or something in here with it or a vegetable stock? No, nope, nothing like that. All you're getting are the juices of the uh, meat and vegetables that have cooked inside the pasty. That is it. To make it a little bit creamier inside, what you do do is put a little knob of butter before we close the pasty case up, once we're filling them. And that'll just cook round the vegetables and give it a lovely flavour, along with the seasoning. And uh, that is about it. So there's not, nothing fancy going on here, but you're making a, a meal in one. Just do this, if you've got a family of four, just do this and you can put this on a plate. You don't need anything with, else with it. You won't need any extra vegetables, you won't need any potatoes with it. Nothing at all. This is very filling. No fuss, no mess meal. Right. And the same with the carrots. So what I'm going to do once again is I'm just going to slice through in sort of centimetre thick slices and then we're just going to slice down and then cube in the same manner don't worry about getting uniform size or anything like that as near as you can get to a centimetre cubed or slightly smaller Oh, another worry that people have is 
Is, are these vegetables and this meat going to cook inside the pastry case? Yeah, of course they are. Very much like, uh, you know, beef wellington cooks. This is going to cook inside the pastry as well. We're not going to have an oven as hot as that. The oven's going to be set at 150 degrees Celsius if you've got a fan oven. 170 if you're in a, a normal oven. And these will bake for 45 minutes or thereabouts inside. We'll keep an eye on them. But 45 minutes should suffice. If after that 45 minutes we haven't got colour on the actual pastry enough, then we're going to turn the oven up a bit higher. We're going to put it up to like 225 and just brown them or help them brown them up. They shouldn't need it, but if they do, that's what we'll do just to finish them off. It's not going to harm it at all. Obviously, you're going to find it very hard to uh, resist eating these as soon as they come out of the oven. But uh, if you can, let them rest. Let them rest for as long as you can. And uh, I'm going to need a better knife than that for the swede because the swede is extremely hard. Somewhere in here, I've got a big knife. Something a little bit sharper for this because it's very firm, these Swedes. You've got to be very careful when you're, you're slicing them. Keep your fingers well out of the way. It's the same thing. Centimetre thick slices. And as I cut the end here, it's a bit like when you've cut a melon, so these are only going to need to go in two. But you want slightly smaller, so we've got slightly thinner and slightly smaller chunks of the swede because we want it to cook. There's nothing worse than when you make a stew and your potatoes are cooked lovely, your carrots are cooked lovely, but your swede's still hard, or, or vice versa. It's a lot easier, I just needed a thicker knife for that. all these vegetables in water because the potatoes especially sweet not so bad but the potatoes especially go very brown very quickly so I kept them in water once they were peeled and the only thing that it looks is missing from these ingredients is a bit of greenery so you know if you want to put a few frozen peas in there as well by all means do that it's not traditional but especially if you're making a vegetarian version you want you want a lot of different vegetables in there so by all means put some peas in the onion. cooks very quickly so you shouldn't have any problem with that.
If you don't fancy doing all this, if you want to save some time, a bit of bit of a shortcut to this. Once again, the supermarkets are doing a lot for us these days, and you can get all these vegetables pretty much chopped up already in pots. Cubes of onion, carrots, maybe not the Swedes so much, but some of it that might save you some time. If you... Oh, you're not confident with the knife? Right, so there's our base. Give that a bit of a mix to get those semi blended. Next, we have our beef skirt. As you can see, it's about just over one and a half centimetres thick. And it's a very, you can see it's got a funny texture to it. But it's brilliant for stewing or pasties. Once again, we want to slice this very thinly. Now there will be small traces of fat and sinew in here, but don't worry, it's all going to cook in. It's a very tender meat when it's slow cooked like we're going to do it. you're doing a winter stew this is a good meat to do in it you can obviously cut it a lot bigger than this because you'll be cooking it longer but this or skirt sorry this or a stewing steak okay so once we've done that I'm just going to take these these lengths we've cut and dice them now and they can be a little bit bigger because they are going to shrink as they cook And then all that's left for us to do after we finish chopping this is just season it and then I'm going to put it to one side in the fridge while we wait for the uh, pastry to rest we'll take a break and we'll probably have to take a break once we've made the pasties and have put them in the oven as well because it's going to take as I say 45 minutes at least but then I'll, uh, I'll start the video again when we have just about to get them out of the oven and we'll cut one open and just have a look inside to show you how they've cooked. So the last few bits. And there we go. So quite a bit of salt in there, but a lot of pepper if you like it, a lot of ground pepper. There's always a good peppery taste to pasties. 
and no other seasoning required. That's it. No other herbs. That is all you do with it. So we're going to stick that in the fridge now and let that rest with the pastry and I'll come back in uh, probably around a quarter of an hour's time when the pastry's sat for a good whole, whole half an hour um, and then we'll start to roll it out, make our pasty shapes, put the filling in and start baking. So I'll see you in a little while. Hello and welcome back. Um, firstly, I need to apologise. I think we've had the first full day of sunshine here in England for I can't remember how long. And of course everyone's out in their gardens um, starting to do the spring tidy up, mowing lawns and strimming. So there is a little bit of noise from outside with my neighbours are tackling their gardens. Um, but we'll try and carry on with, uh, with that noise. So um, pastry has been sitting in the fridge for ooh, probably around 45 minutes now. Um, it's been resting, which has done it the world of good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to divide it up into four. And we're going to roll that into a ball. Roll that out to about a 10 centimetre, um, sorry, 10 inch wide disc. Um, you know, about so thick. Um, and we'll measure that with a dinner plate because they're around 10 inches. So that's an ideal um, guide to use. Uh, and then we're going to fill them, egg wash them. And get them in the oven. I've turned the oven on. Uh, the oven's preheating now at 150 fan oven, 170 if it's not a fan oven. Um, and once that's up to temperature we'll be able to cook these for 45 minutes and uh, hopefully they will brown sufficiently and we won't need to turn it up but um, we might have to just to give them a bit of colour. So let's start by dividing this up. So this recipe really was for a four large Cornish pasty and by by large I mean large so you're gonna you know if you've got a hungry man in the family like me you're gonna eat one of these but uh, you know half each for a, a children will be plenty so we'll just circle these up a little bit which will make them easier to roll out into discs. Now the dough's a lot firmer, obviously all the fats that we put in there have chilled up nicely and it's made it so that uh, that pastry is going to uh, be very easy to to roll out and work with. It's not brittle at all in any shape or form now. got a little bit of flour on my work surface but we might need a little bit more but we'll start off and see how it goes. So we're just rolling backwards and forwards and then turning 90 degrees and carrying on. Let's get a bit more flour. on this 90 degrees I'm going to turn it over and just give it a bit more flour on that side and just keep going until you think you've got the size of a dinner plate and then what we'll do is we'll place a dinner plate over it and cut round it with a sharp small knife to stretch it better you can hold it at the other end and get it an even thickness throughout if you can. Make sure you roll right up to the ends and that'll help you get a uniform thickness. So let's just pick a plate up and just see how far off we are. Not very far, just a little bit more and we'll be there. And 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of, well, one or two of these we'll make. And then I'll uh, take a little break while I finish off the rest of them. And then we'll let you join me again before we bake them. And we'll egg wash them. And... Right, let's see how far off we are now. Now that looks better. So we can pop the plate down. And then with just a sharp knife, just cut off the excess. Keep all this excess dough. Because you can, you know, if you want to do something fancy, like a little bit of decoration on top of the pasty, a couple of leaves or something, you've got dough to do that. But also, the leftovers from the four might make another pasty if you've got excess filling left over as well. Right, so there's our first pasty disc. So you can see... Once that's folded over with the filling in it and then it's crimped up, you know, we're going to crimp and roll the side down. You're going to have, you know, a standard sort of pasty, large pasty size there. Okay. Now the pastry is looking really good. I'm really pleased with how the pastry's come out considering that we had to uh, do other things. Right. Um, so we're going to need some egg wash. For this because we're going to need to egg wash the edge when we seal it and crimp it over um, we're also going to need to egg wash the top so I've got a large egg which was just beat up with a fork but what we're going to do once we've beaten that up a bit is put a bit of seasoning in there as well bit of salt and black pepper just so that when we glaze the pasty on top as well we're, we're just adding to the the pastry a bit of seasoning that will bake bake into it I may even give another little sprinkle of sea salt and black pepper on the outside once they have been egg washed as well it just gives a bit of crunch and you get that, that you know especially if you've got large ground sea salt granules it's nice savoury crunch to the pastry. Right, I'm going to put a little tiny bit of milk in there just to uh, break the egg down a little bit. It'll make the, the egg washing a little bit easier. Not a, not a lot, just a few drops. And then a brush for it as well. Okay, stick that to one side for a minute. Okay, so it's not sticking to the board at all. It's a good thickness. So let's get the filling. Now what I'm going to be doing is putting a generous portion of this filling on one side in the in the middle, just enough to. Uh, fill the pasty but uh, you know not so it bloats it too much and we uh, end up splitting it so we want to get a good good portion in there there's a lot of meat in that one so let's get some some veg want to make sure you put enough in but not that much that you can see it's going to uh, break the pastry when you start to fold it up so that's good to me I don't think we'll go too much more than that make sure you've got lots of room around the outside edge and then before we seal it up we're just going to put a little knob of butter in the middle of that. And this is going to add some flavour but it also gives you that extra flavour with the juices of the meat and the potato and vegetables as they cook. So we're just going to put a little bit of 
margarine, uh, sorry, butter on top of that. And then we need our egg wash. The egg wash brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to egg wash this side here. I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to crimp round and seal the pasty up. So I'm just going to gentle egg wash around that outer edge. And then we're going to bring this right over and seal it down Right, you can just give it a press with your thumb, but don't worry about sealing it too much because we are going to crimp it over. We're just going to seal it a little like that. And then we're going to grab the corner and we're going to turn it in like that. Move along, turn it in. Move it along, turn it in. actually got this the wrong way round so it's probably very difficult for you to see what we've done here. I'll do another one so we can see. So that's what we're looking for like that. Now one more thing we need to do to this before we bake it is just put two big holes in the top to let the steam out and then that can go on our baking tray okay so let's do another one You'll find the dough is very easy to work with. As I say, it's chilled and it's firm because we've uh, let it rest. But you can see what that rest has done to it. It's, uh, it's made it usable. It's got a lovely sort of smooth texture to it. the gardening stop now so we've got a nice bit of peace and quiet you should be able to hear what I'm, I'm saying if you wanted to make some mini versions of these for the kids you could do just use a uh, a saucer as your guide so they're about seven inches and that'll give you a slightly smaller one or you can go even smaller than that and just use a sort of cup with a large you know two to three inch circumference to cut out discs and then you know barely a dessert spoonful of uh, filling in it like those mini ones that you can buy in the supermarkets And of course, if you haven't frozen any of the ingredients, so like the beef skirt or anything like that, you can freeze these pasties. And as long as you defrost them properly and bake them well in the oven, make sure they're piping hot and cooked inside, there's no issue with that. A little bit longer.
is not the ideal surface for rolling out pastry that I've got here, but unfortunately it's all I've got at the moment. Uh, very little worktop space in here, and I am looking to get something portable that will uh, have a proper work surface top on it for presenting. Right, that's perfect, so we can cut around that. may be able to get five out of this. Okay. Another good disc. So same again. This one I'll do the other side so that I can show you the the crimping. I'm just breaking up some of the meat here across the vegetables so that you can get a bit of everything in the pasty. So we'll egg wash the, the rim here. Once again, a little knob of butter, just to cook with those juices inside that will uh, make it delicious. over, just touch that down with our thumb, like that, just move these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, because there is an art to the, the crimping method, so you want to, we just want a little bit of egg wash actually, just above the thumb, the line where we've, we've uh, thumbed it down, because it will help stick and you just take the corner and fold it in and then you lift stretch and fold all the way around like that so I'm holding the last one stretching and pulling in the next one like so and you just continue all the way around like that until you get to the end like so. And that gives you that lovely sort of crusty knot that you you get along a pasty like that. So two holes and open them up with the knife because we want to get uh, let the steam out on those. And there's our next one. With a bit of luck I'll be able to get four on the tray. So I'll just finish off these next two and then I'll come back to you. Hi and welcome back. Right, I've made the other two pasties. So we've got uh, the four that we're intending to make. It looks like I'm going to have enough pastry left over and enough mixture to do another one as well, but I'll do that um, afterwards. But let's get these in the oven and get these baking. So the first thing we've got to do is egg, finish egg washing them. And they need a good coating, especially in and around the knotted area. So make sure you coat them thoroughly. Now you can bake these on a baking tray direct if you want the, uh, the base to be nice and crusty or on baking paper on top of a baking tray. You don't have to preheat the baking tray at all. I'm using a silicon baking sheet that I bought from the supermarket. And this is just because it, it will not stick to this at all. 
be very easy to get them off. You've got no risk of it sticking to paper or to the tray and having to prise it off with a knife or anything like that. So a good coating all over. And we're going to pop these into the oven. So as I said, the oven, 150 degrees for a fan oven, 170 for a standard oven, 45 minutes. I would put 35 on the clock and just have an eye on them. Maybe turn the tray round so you can get a bit more colour on the other side. After 45 minutes, we'll have a look. If they haven't got any colour, I'm going to turn the oven up to 225 degrees Celsius and just let them cook for a bit longer just to get the brown on the pastry. Hopefully we won't need that but it's play it by ear on here. So I'll put 35 minutes on first and we'll see after that. Okay so I'll clean up a little bit and I'll see you in about 45 minutes time. Hello and welcome back. Well, as luck would have it, I had enough pastry left over to make another large Cornish pasty. So I've done this one a little bit differently. Um, it's still been glazed with the egg wash, but I've sprinkled um, coarsely ground sea salt and black pepper over the crust, as you can see. And that's just going to give the crust a, a little flavour. You'll just get that, that hint of sea salt and black pepper as you're biting into the pastry. So what we're going to do is get the ones that we put in earlier, the four out. They have been in for 45 minutes. I did turn the oven up just for five minutes onto 225, just to get a little bit more colour on them. And they're looking about right now, so let's get them out and swap them with this one. So you can see they've got a lovely even colour and they smell amazing. The whole kitchen smells amazing. It smells like a Cornish pasty shop in here. <laughs> it's lovely. So um, yeah, lovely golden colour to the pastry. The pastry's come out good considering that we couldn't use um, the suet and we had to uh, use other fats instead. But um, let's just have a look and see if they're done underneath and looking. Yep, so all looking good there. They're solid, they're holding together well. Perfect. So let's get a plate. Um, actually, I won't use a plate, I'll use the board. I'm just going to take one off and we'll open him up so we can have a look inside. Very hot very hot indeed but let's uh, just open one up and have a look we'll have a little taste as well so as I say they would benefit from sitting for a while just to rest let's, uh, let's just have a look inside there and it's all looking good in there. The pastry is cooked perfectly through, not doughy at all or anything like that. I'm going to have a little taste but it's going to be really hot so just bear with me. The pastry is lovely and crunch, crunchy and crispy. Let's just see the various elements are cooked. So the potato, lovely and soft, beautiful. A bit of the meat and a bit of the pastry. These can move much nicer when they've sat for a while.
beautiful flavour inside that. The meat's lovely and tender and cooked and it'll, it'll even tenderise more as it sits. The potato, the swede, carrot and the onion, all cooked perfectly. Not crunchy at all, lovely soft melt in the mouth. A beautiful flavour of the seasoning that we've put in there and the butter. They've come out really well. They taste like a proper Cornish pasty you would get if you were on holiday in Cornwall. <coughs> or if you were buying one from the, the shop, the baker's. Um, so have a go at those. They're really worth making. So much nicer to make them yourself. And they go lovely. You know, maybe a bit of gravy with them, but um, they're really nice on their own. You know, ideal to take to work for lunch. And uh, I would say easy to make and very simple ingredients. There's nothing out of anyone's uh, capability there, even the even the pastry. Um, but the pastries come out really well. I'm pleased with that, considering we didn't use the any vegetable shortening or suet or anything. So I hope you like the video. Uh, once again, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to know when I upload further content. Um, I am going to continue to try and do these um, shows on YouTube. It's getting a little bit more difficult to get ingredients, but I've got some ingredients stored up, so hopefully I'll be able to come up with recipe ideas for the things I've got in my store cupboard and freezer. But um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I don't mind either way. And uh, have a go at making those yourself, because you'll be surprised how lovely they are. And so until next time, I'll see you then.